why this airport had ghost lights to nowhere. When you hear the word airport, you most likely think of a hustling, bustling place filled to the brim with anxious and excited people. It's certainly the case for one of the busiest airports in the world. Yet, for quite a while, it had completely empty flights taking off and landing on one of its runways. Sounds totally illogical and counterproductive, but it's true. Where and why did it happen? Well, you're about to find out. Before we unveil all this mystery, take a second to subscribe to our channel and ring the notification bell so that you never miss any flights. Uh, sorry, updates coming out daily on the bright side of life. Now, what airport would have ghost flights carrying no passengers? What are your guesses, brightsiders? Probably a no-name town in some mountainous region? Perhaps it's a non-existent place in the Harry Potter universe? Actually, that's pretty close, because the airport we're talking about is in the UK. Except, unlike Harry Potter's world, it's very real and sees 213,000 passengers go through it every single day. In 2017 alone, 78 million people took off and landed on its grounds. Alright, enough with the mystery already! We're talking about Heathrow Airport in London, probably one of the most famous airports in the world. It only has two runways, yet it's the world's busiest airport of its kind, with planes taking off and landing every 45 seconds. That being said, you must be wondering, how is it possible that such a crazy busy airport, where a one minute delay on the runway can cause havoc and throw the entire day's schedule off track, would have flights with no passengers whatsoever? If you expect some mysterious explanation, such as, it's all room for ghosts, or it's some secret government experiments, get ready for the disappointment. It's all about money, just like so many things in this world, right? You see, an airport is nothing like your kind and always welcoming grandma. As a flight, you can't just stop by any time with a 10-minute notice and get your guaranteed landing spot. It's especially true for huge and crazy busy airports like Heathrow. To be able to take off and land there, an airline needs to buy a slot pair. A slot pair is basically a golden ticket or permission to operate flights to and from a certain airport at a certain time. Since London is a major cultural and business center with millions of people striving to get there all year round, you'd imagine the demand to fly to and from there is, well, sky high. The number of slot pairs Heathrow offers might seem quite big, with 650 flights a day, but it's still far from enough. So, buying a slot pair from this airport is pretty expensive to say the least. Oman Air, for instance, had to pay $75 million for one of theirs. Yes, you heard that right, $75 million. Imagine what you could have done with all that money. This was the price to land their planes at Heathrow at 6.30 a.m. and take off at 8.25 a.m., which is probably the most popular timing for overnight flights from the U.S. and Asia. So, Oman Air bought this slot from Kenya Airways, which had owned it up until 2016, to fly from and to Muscat, Oman. While this was the most expensive deal of its kind Heathrow has ever seen, regular slot pairs there can still cost tens of millions of dollars. Now you understand why you don't want to lose that slot once you've paid for it. But there are certain stipulations an airline must abide by in order to keep this precious time reservation, so they absolutely can lose them. Air traffic rules and regulations require airlines to use their slots 80% of the time, otherwise they'll be confiscated. When that happens, the slot transfers to the next airline on the waiting list. Of course, no airline wants to lose what they've paid big money for, so they had to come up with a smart decision. British Mediterranean Airways used to successfully operate flights from and to Tashkent, Uzbekistan until 2007. That was a time of some serious civil unrest in the former Soviet Republic. So, the airline decided to cancel their flights to this destination permanently. They were about to lose their slot with takeoff from Heathrow at 2.35 p.m. and arrival at noon the next day. Now, the slot you get for that huge amount of money might be non-refundable, but it's pretty flexible. It doesn't say you can only fly to and from the specific destination you bought it for. The airline decided to make use of this and just send their airplanes in a different direction to still use the slot. So, an empty little A320 operated by British Mediterranean would fly to Cardiff, Wales and come back the next day, six days a week. Okay, now this change of destination makes sense, but it's still not clear why the flights had to be absolutely empty, with crew but not a single passenger on board. The reason, again, is financial. Operating passenger flights is more than just buying an aircraft and hiring the flight crew. Airlines also have to hire gate agents, make contracts with baggage handlers, and pay for other services to be able to actually fly people places. 
Since the new destination was a last minute decision, it would have cost them too much to do all that in a short amount of time. So they decided to just run empty planes instead. Did they lose good money? Sure. Plus, they also caused some pretty serious damage to Mother Earth, with every flight releasing five tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Sadly, not too many businesses care about that anyway. Those ghost flights did end and British Mediterranean Airways went under, but it doesn't make the story any less true. If you think that British Mediterranean is the only airline to have come up with ghost flights from Heathrow, you'd be wrong. In 2004, Qantas Airlines purchased two slot pairs from Flybe. The deal cost them $25 million, but they couldn't arrange flights to their native Australia straight away. It's pretty hard organizing those, given the distance and the fact that they'd also have to go through Singapore. So they had to find a solution to keep their slot pairs. The problem was that, as an Australian airline, they couldn't fly domestically within the UK. So they made an arrangement with a British airline to fly their 112-passenger British Aerospace 146 twice a day to Manchester. However, since people could only buy tickets as a connection flight to or from one of those Qantas flights to Australia, demand was pretty low. They say the flight had two to three passengers on some days. Better than none, I guess, but still not too much. It seems like ghost flights are now history, yet airlines still have to make adjustments to their schedules to keep their slots. For example, in the winter months, when fewer people tend to travel, they prefer cheaper and closer destinations. In that case, even when the flight is half empty, they lose less money and the slot is still theirs. As for Heathrow, it's still one of the busiest and most important air hubs in the world, with millions of people going through it as their final or transfer destination. It's pretty hard to be all that with just two runways, which is why Heathrow is about to get its third runway pretty soon. It's already caused some protest with environmentalists, but that's a whole other story in and of itself. Do you have any crazy air travel stories to share? Tell us in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a like if you've learned something new from it, and just click subscribe to stay on the bright side of life. Until next time.